My next guest, Lynn, reached out for my help in saving his marriage with his wife, Val. Val and Lynn have been married for nine years, but Lynn says lately Val is more interested in going out, partying with her sister, Mary, than being his wife. Everyone, please welcome Lynn to the show so we can get his side of the story. I'm having a little difficulty communicating with my wife now. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like we're drawing blanks. We're bumping heads. Yeah. Um, it's just getting to a point where I don't know where I stand. Okay. I'm not sure where to begin or where to end. Yeah, let me go to the beginning. How did you meet your wife, Val? Oh, I met her on Plenty of Fish. Um, so oh, yeah, a beautiful couple. Yeah, Look at that. that's my baby. <laughs> that's my baby. So, it was like love at first sight. I yeah. mean, um, she was everything I actually ever wanted and needed mm -hmm. in my life. And during that time, you were dealing with a lot of loss. Yeah, mom. Lost my brothers. My mother passed when we started dating. And um, she actually turned around on the tow road, came back, stayed beside me the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that's the day I fell in love with her. Got it. Wow, that's a beautiful thing. So you told my producer she's, so she's acting out of character with yeah, going out. Right. So she'd never been going out like this before? Oh, no, no, no. She was just, you know, more of a homebody. I, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, she's always doing events, but now it seemed like it went up a notch. Mm -hmm. And it's just no time, it seemed like, for us. And how often do you say your wife goes out? Oh, Jesus, probably um, twice, three times a week. So three times a week she's partying until 3 a.m. And when did this behavior start exactly? Um, the loss of her daughter. It was Brittany. Um, okay. And it kind of um, took a toll on her because it happened right right before Christmas. Just this past this, Christmas? Yeah, this December oh the 8th. Oh, so recently, yeah. a couple months and ago. I, then it happened at home. Oh. So I understand that she doesn't want to be there. She don't want to be there. She don't want to see this. She don't want to see her room, which I understand. I mean, God, help her, please. But I just want to know where I, where I stand in all this. So let me get this, because I did not know this. So her daughter, is yeah. this biologically your daughter or your stepdaughter? My stepdaughter. Just passed a couple months ago, three months ago. Yes. In the house you all live in. Yeah. And so since then, she's been leaving the house, going out and partying. Yeah. Got it. Or doing a function or planning a party. How old was, um, how old was Val's daughter? She was 25 when she passed. 25 years old. All I know is that me and my sister is like this. Mm -hmm. And we've been like this since day one. You know, I know I'm the wild one. But, you know, I just try to be there for her, yeah. as a, especially if she lost her daughter. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I do go out. And he right, you know, we probably went for one drink. Hey, it turned to 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was going to cause a problem because mm -hmm. I'm used to staying out like that. But do you feel like you're just being there for your sister? I, I, that's all I was doing. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think it was going to cause a problem. If I would have known that it would have caused a problem, mm -hmm. then I would never have let her stay out the bar to 3 o'clock in the morning. So you told my producer that you think that Lynn is controlling. Yeah. Tell me about that. Like, say, like, if she put on something nice, mm -hmm. she lost a lot of weight. Okay. And she wants to show it. That night when I was down there, she had this outfit on, you know, the cleavage. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he, he hurt her feelings when he didn't say, you look nice. He said, go take that off. Where's you going mm. with that on? So when why did you say that? Cleavage, hanging out. Yeah. Going to a bar. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. So listen, I, I want to go back to your niece a little bit because I know that I'm about to bring, um, Val out, oh, and Jesus. I want to know more about your niece, Brittany. Tell me about her. Brittany is oh. one sweet, kind-hearted person. Mm -hmm. she was there an she angel. go, right there. The way her glows right there, that's her. Yeah. An angel. She was so gorgeous. You know, she was 25. Just um, a baby. I, I've been around her when she was born. You know, like I said, me and my sister is very tight, and when she had the kids. Beautiful girl, 25. <clears throat> yeah. And she's not so here anymore. Live life yet. And that hurts her, me, and everybody else around it. Can I ask a question? Who found Brittany in the house deceased? Me and her mother. So you just. What happened in front of us? Yeah. What happened in front of you in the house? Yeah, she died right in front of us, sitting on the love seat, and she passed. Got it. And it was unexpected. Yes. So it wasn't like she was. She was ill. Um, she was ill, but like we didn't. You didn't. We think didn't she was expect going that. No. You see it coming. Not like that. Mm -mm. Uh, it, it came, like a storm. Yeah. Okay. And it was. So, um, Mary, you think that? You told my producers you think Lynn needs to give Val a break. What Just a little that? bit. Not as not as much. Just enough that she can get room mm -hmm. to just, just be happy. Mm -hmm. Just smile. 
you know, I know that's your wife and everything. I know that you love her. But just let her smile. Let's let her just joy herself. She could smile with me. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but she could she, smile she, with me. She, she, she smile with you all the time. Mm -hmm. Just give just give her a little break. That way she can go and smile for herself. Mm -hmm. Also. For, for the record, do you support this marriage? I do support I my sister marriage. Yeah, there was hesitation. Mm -hmm. I, saw I, well. I support my sister in the marriage because I didn't know Lynn that good when she married him. Mm -hmm. I thought it was too fast, but you know, my sister, she was happy. She wanted to do it. To me, I thought it was too soon, but it's not my place to state it. Got it. And they've been married for 10 years now, right? Yes. Well, listen, everyone, I want to hear what Val thinks about this entire situation. So please, everyone, help me welcome Val to the show. <laughs> So tell me from your point of view, why are you going to the bar with Mary? Just to get out mm -hmm. and do things, girl time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel there was anything wrong with that, but in his eyes, it is. Why do you think he doesn't trust you? Because of Mary. Husband and friend. I sure do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a husband and a friend, yes I do. You got a yeah. husband and a friend. I sure do. Yeah. You think Val is gonna be influenced by the fact that she has a husband and a friend, that she's gonna want a friend as well? I would hope not, but I doubt that. She would that. never do that. Mm -hmm. Would you ever put yourself it, in that position? No, I wouldn't. Because mm -hmm. I know what I have. I love my husband, I and I would not do baby. anything to jeopardize that. Mm -hmm. What Mary does, that's her business. Thank you. It's good to hear. I'm so sorry about your loss of your daughter. I know you've heard that a million times, but I really am sorry. Thank you. So you don't want to stay in the house because they're memories. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's just too much. It's, everything is Brittany. Yeah. I sit across from where it happened, mm -hmm. and I just it just bring back just constant just replaying in my head. I'm just hoping, like when I look at the steps, I just remember her coming down the steps. Mm -hmm. It's like it's just constant, mm -hmm. a reminder of everything, because. That was my, that was my daughter. Yeah. And just being at the home, just too many re memories. And so I do what I do just to try to stay away from there. And it's just being, especially when you be in a house, it's just quiet. Yeah. It's not the same. She's right. With her not being there, you know, and. Yeah. So I just do whatever I can just to, just to get out, just to get away from it. Yeah. And it's not like I'm trying to exclude him from anything. I try to involve him with it. And, you know, and that's when Mary, she came in and she just like. And I am so thankful for that. I'm glad Mary came know. through the way she did. Because she was right there mm -hmm. at the house with Val. Yes, she know. brought a lot of laughter to Val, sure which did. nobody else could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a funny person. I'm going to get you going. I'm going to get you going. <laughs> <laughs> I, for real. What, what happened the week after Thanksgiving? That's when we lost Brittany. Um, Are you blaming yourself for her death? I do. Why? Because, um... The doctor had called and said that Brittany needed to go to the emergency room mm -hmm. because her potassium was too high. She didn't want it, of course, and they said she had to be admitted to ICU mm -hmm. because that's how critical it was. I went to work that night, and then I came to visit her after, as soon as I got off work, I went up there. And so it was like, you know, I'm talking to her and stuff, and, you know, she's just upset. And then here it was. Um, you know, the, the doc, the nurse that was in there saying, you know, her level's looking a lot better and stuff, you know. So she probably won't stay in ICU. I said, well, let me go home and get me some rest. And I'm going to start prepping because we was preparing for Thanksgiving. Yes. And so he wakes me up. Brittany discharged. What do you mean, Brittany? This, I mean, this is how I'm looking like. What do you mean she discharged? She was in ICU. Yep. So I call up there. Let me speak to the nurse. So she put the nurse on the phone. So he was like, her levels are looking a lot better. We're moving her to a regular room. Mm. But she don't want to stay, and we cannot make her stay. Yeah, got it. <sighs> like, uh, so you feel as if you would have stayed, you could have convinced her to stay in there. 
but because you went home to get rest, you feel like that's what set this in motion. Mm -hmm. okay. That's how I felt. Yeah, I, I got. I got to tell you right now. What are you about to say? I keep saying, telling her that's not her fault. Yeah. Yes. You can't predict what's going to happen. Yes. And that's what's eating her up inside. Yeah. She's even, uh, your, your sister's telling the truth. You know. You know, your daughter made her choice in that moment. And sometimes as parents, we don't understand why they make the choices. We feel like if I was just there, I could have told them, make a better choice, do this. But that has nothing to do with you. And I know that in this moment, because it's so recent, it's going to be hard for you to realize that. I know it's going to be hard for you to think about that because you're like, I'm mom. I'm supposed to do everything to protect my child. But you did do everything. I hear that story, and I don't see a single thing you could have did wrong, mom. You did everything that was right, and you also needed to rest. We be trying to make trips to go places so we could just get get her away. Mm -hmm. You know, that way she could relax her mind and she won't have to think about working. She can just chill. Just think about herself. Yeah. Is this the first time going out with your sister that you're kind of having that opportunity to think about yourself? Yeah, we had fun yes. too. We was kicking. <laughs> we was kicking. She was smiling. <laughs> this is your first time to feel like you're getting some time for yourself to, yes. to kind of take your mind off the stress? Yes. I mean, it was so nice that night. I mean, it wasn't even... It was intention to be out that late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was you can't tell me that one drink, <laughs> and it didn't end up like that. Yeah. It was like drink after then. You yeah. know, then as we got in there, and when we got in there, you know, we start seeing it was like a like a reunion from yeah. the, from mm -hmm. people that we grew up with, and everybody just hugging and hugging, and they heard about Britney. Yeah. It just felt good, and then I just happened to call my husband, Three. you know, on. FaceTime, you know. And, but she you know, was calling you to include you. Yes. Not at 3 a.m. To let her know nah. that he was, he was having fun. This is what I got to tell you, because this is what I'm seeing right here. I, I, you know, I'm watching the joy that has come around you telling that story. And I think that anybody who has went through what you went through deserves to get their joy however they can. But I realized something. Lynn, you said to me immediately that your issue is that you feel like you're losing your wife and that the communication is broken down. Yeah. But the thing is, I just heard that in the moment your wife went to the bar the first time to experience something that was going to bring her joy, to be able to be around people, she did try to include you. At 3 a.m. Doesn't matter. She's trying to find some joy in one of the hardest moments of her life. Mm -hmm. And she was still thinking about you mm -hmm. to the place that she would call you. I didn't even and think I, about that, that. Maybe I've been doing this all wrong. Yeah. What, and I'm when truly, it comes I'm sorry. To grieving, <laughs> I'm truly, I'm sorry. When it comes to grieving, we have to remember that we have to communicate to the people around us that this is the way I grieve and I need your support. Because what happens, we just assume that people will understand, but we all grieve differently. Do you think that you can be more honest with him and talk about what you need as you're grieving? That would be so awesome. I think I can, but sometimes when I try to discuss things with him, I feel like he shuts me down. Like sometimes I feel like he don't hear me. Mm -hmm. And then I go, I start shutting down. But I can understand where that comes from. It's because you told me at the beginning, your exact words is that when things are going wrong, I want to fix yeah, it. Yeah, I want to fix it. And so right now she's telling you, I don't need you to fix it. I just need you to hear me. And especially when it comes to grief, yeah. she just needs you to listen. I'll do more of that. I'm sorry, baby. Do you believe that he can do more of listening? I'm hoping he will. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you everything. Yeah. 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 And we'll get out of that house a lot sooner than you think. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, you know, something that you said, because when I heard that story about the fact that you all were in this space of in your house when you lost your daughter, um, I immediately want to tell you that I want to support you in that. Um, so I want to give you a down payment or for first month's rent so that you can find a new place. Because I know how hard it is. And do you also additionally want, do you also additionally, would you like some therapy? Oh, definitely. You definitely would? Because I think talking to somebody would be great. Yeah? I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I could give you the support. And I'm glad that you have these things to walk away with today. I'm glad that your husband has got it. I'm glad that you have your sister. I'm really sorry for your loss, but know that we're all here for you.
Thank you. Okay. Hold up, hold up. Where are you going? I know you want to watch more Karamo, so click here to subscribe and click here to watch more so we can keep talking and growing, friends. I love you.